Hey all, welcome to our uh, Christmas edition of our uh, weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am uh, your host, Jinx, and uh, we are joined by some of the uh, most recognizable names in the ecosystem, for sure. Uh, don't know how much of a call we'll have today, given how close we are to Christmas. I know a lot of people are already uh, closing up shop uh, for the end of the year. Thanks for the sound effects there, Jerry. Our producer, Jerry, everyone. Um, so... Figure we can run through uh, whatever announcements and updates we have and then see if anybody's got anything that they want to uh, talk about. I do have a topic that I'd like to touch briefly, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, let's start off with uh, Zach. Any community updates? Hey, James. Yeah, thanks. Happy holidays. Um, from the, the foundation, we have, uh, I just put, dropped a post last night about um, some changes to sockets. Um, so people want to check the forum for that and leave some feedback. The, the TLDR is we're just trying to make sure that we have better guidelines for the sockets. So that way, when people come in, they understand what um, is expected of them. And then additionally, like understand when we close sockets, like why that would be. So we're, we're pushing for this idea of proof of impact for um, kind of the spend for, for 2024. And we're going to be doubling down on that. Um, my personal request is uh, I'd love more community involvement for the sockets. You know, I'm, I right now I'm stepping up to say like, okay, I'm going to make sure that these get reviews and people get the help that they need. But I really want to make sure that the community is also weighing in and being like, yo, this is super valuable or no, this isn't valuable at all. And we should consider um, spending the funds elsewhere or finding a different way to manage it. So the, the big thing here is I don't want people to think we're trying to shut down anything. We're just trying to give better guardrails um, so everybody understands the expectations. Um, and then we have a couple more updates coming. Um, I don't know if Ben's going to post it before the end of the year, but adjusting some of the, the reporting cycles to be more like quarterly. Um, so that way we don't have this off cycle error report and then a quarterly report. But um, yeah, would love people's thoughts and opinions. What else? There's two more. Um, there's two votes up for pro proposals up for a vote right now. Um, so if you haven't voted already, please do. I've DM'd everybody personally to, to get them to vote, but if you have any questions please reach out the pocket scan one's probably the most important one i think the the other one just closed um for the mods but if you do have questions about the pocket scan one please dm me um open the discussion let's let's nail that down before the end of the year and that's it from the foundation thanks beautiful fred anything uh interesting we should know about from y'all side of the house if i can find my mute button um yeah so uh <laughs> We are going on code freeze, end of day, Eastern Standard Time today. Uh, what this means is there will be no changes on the Grove end until January 2nd. Um, at the same rate, we'll be paring down our support to only support critical requests over the holiday. Um, so we will still have 24-7 support for enterprise customers, but um, unless it's really mission critical, we're going we're gonna to stave it off. Um, last thing is we were really hoping to launch three chains, uh, this week. Um, that has not come to fruition. Um, we had some issues kind of with the bootstrapping phase as well as, um, we missed the window for the foundation transaction. Um, so those are not allow listed. They were supposed to be allow listed on Monday. Um, and so we won't be launching those three chains, but we should be able to get on them first thing next year. That's all I got. All right. Uh, and I, I guess there's no uh, lot listing transactions or anything happening next week. I cannot speak to that. Okay, got it. Well, noted. It's, uh, it's always kind of a, a rush at the end of the year to see what's going to get in and what's not. Uh, obviously, as a, a, a member of the community and uh, an investor, I always hope that more can get done rather than less, but we'll be looking forward to a strong start of the year with some uh, some good stuff coming right out of the gate as we tick forward into 2024. Um, anybody else have anything that uh, you want to talk about uh, this week? Zach, I had a uh, question regarding the uh, sockets. Uh, with With this update... I guess I kind of learned some new things. I uh, And in your little update here, you mentioned that uh, 
you know, sockets are supposed to, you know, community supposed to say, yes, we want them or, or, or no, we don't want them. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, and then, you know, I guess the community would then shut down sockets. Um, but obviously that's not the case. Uh, and so I'm curious what kind of the vision is of sockets, like in the most ideal world, in the perfect world, how does a socket operate in terms of what, when is it, uh, once it's launched, kind of what are all the steps and, and how does it proceed and how is it then eventually closed down in like the perfect world? Yeah, I mean, like, if I was going to say perfect world, and I also, Shane, there's a follow-up post to this that I'm going to put. I realize I don't have some, like, procedural pieces in that post, so um, some clarification around that's going to be helpful. But, yeah, in an ideal world, it would be like, Shane comes in, he knows he wants to build an SDK for the wallet, so he says, I'm going to open a socket to do this. The The point I had made there is, like, Shane, you're a known entity in our ecosystem, and so it's real easy for us to say, like, Shane does good work, let's open this socket he's going to value it correctly and let you work on that. Whereas like if we had a new participant coming into the ecosystem and saying, I want three grand to build a socket, to do this thing. We're going to need a little more like upfront kind of reputation, I guess, like, Hey, we need to see that you're actually going to be able to build this before we start giving away large amounts of money for that. Um, so an ideal world would be Shane, like you open a socket for building the SDK and then we adjust the amount to be like, hey, does it need maintenance three months down the road? Cool. So we're going to do $500 of maintenance um, until we no longer need the SDK. Um, in a perfect world, it would be more of like, you know, like Pocket News is kind of the, the gold star on this one. They came in, they said, we want to do some marketing stuff with you all. Here's what we're going to do. They gave great reports weekly, even though we only needed a monthly. And then at the end of every month, we were able to say like, hey, this is awesome. We really like it. And then I think it was a little longer than three months, actually, when we were like, hey, you're doing great work. It's very consistent. We should make you a core contributor. And so I think that's where the fork in the road is. Like after your quote unquote experiment is run or whatever the project you want to try is, um, we either choose like this is crucial infra and we want to keep you around as a core contributor. Or maybe you say like, well, this was an awesome project. I'm going to close this down. I actually want to do a $30,000 RFP or pop for um, a bigger project. I just think about it as like proof of impact, which is you're showing us that you're making impact month over month. And we're able to say like, yes, more of this. And then also, um, you know, like at the end of this thing, like we want you to be able to say like, I've, I've done my job here. I want to do bigger, better things. So, you know, that ideal user journey would be socket to pop or core contributor, I guess. And ideally, as the community, you know, people would be weighing in after or every month on the reporting and being like, hey, I don't think this is driving the needle anywhere or saying, hey, we should change a couple of things to make it more impactful. Um, or ultimately, you can just come in and say, like, this is not providing any value. I think we should shut it down. And then it would fall to, I guess right now, like, I would be steering the ship and saying, like, hey, we're getting some feedback. This isn't working. We're going to close this down. Um, and then maybe we can iterate on it and reopen it with a different um, set of goals or deliverables. Because I'm really not looking to, we want to run the experiments. We don't want to shut them down. We just want to make sure that the people working on them are able to deliver good work, you know, month over month on this and not just slowly eating away at our treasury. Does that make sense, Shane? Yeah, uh, I, I guess I'm not entirely sure so say the perfect world, but the not perfect socket. So ideally, uh, if a, uh, well, I guess in your post, you said if they don't post an update, they will automatically be shut down. Uh, that, that's yeah. going to be the, the, the new standard. And then, uh, so that's, that's, you know, that addresses, you know, not getting an update. If there is an update, then uh, it's basically up to the community to say, someone in the community to say, um, hey, I don't, I, I don't think this should be, uh, or I don't think this is, you know, really valuable right now or something, and it should be shut down. Um, yeah. And then PNF kind of just, I guess, responds to it. Do they make the executive decision of yeah, just... Right now, yeah. Because, like, Shane, ideally there's four or five people or, or more than that coming in and saying, this socket's great or this socket's 
not great. And like, at some point it would be awesome for people to be like, yo, this is really not valuable. We want to shut it down and get some sort of quorum on it. I, I will say looking forward with the new cred system, citizenship is going to be a lot easier for people to get, which is like a vote in the DAO. And my hope is that we can run some sort of incentive there that's like, hey, everybody who's a, a citizen, it's part of your responsibility as a citizen to review sockets. And at that point, you know, I, I could see us getting 10 to 20 people weighing in a month, and it's going to be pretty obvious the community sentiment of is a socket delivering value or not. And I know we're going to run into these edge cases, Shane, which is like, you know, hey, does does random retail investor um, have any understanding of how important a piece of infra socket might be? And I think that's kind of the tension here is like, do you want Zach shutting down a piece of infra if he has no idea what what we're building? And the, you know, I wish I had like a clear cut example or like, here's how we would do it. But I think it's going to have to be a little bit of wayfinding as we, you know, we find the cadence or the way that the community works on that. Yeah, I mean, for the record, I I would think that actually PNF, uh, you know, more or less evaluating a socket's impact and and uh, you know is best. Um, I, I don't know if I I don't know how uh, uh, it, it's a very touchy touchy thing to uh, to have the community you know, to to have to speak negatively about a socket because most likely that's someone in the community and there's, you know, you 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 mess with someone's socket, you're messing, you know, you could be messing, yeah. you know, with that person and expecting community members to, to throw themselves under the bus or to become yeah. a target of someone's wrath. Like, that's where... It, there's there's just so many social games going on in uh in 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 something like a DAO. So I would actually prefer the more leaning towards at least what your proposal um suggested. Uh where you know PNF does an evaluation. Um, you know, people are welcome to pipe in, right? Mm -hmm. Uh you know, I would almost say uh the piping in will probably I think it would be easier on the DAO if the piping in was on a, hey, keep the socket, right? So right. I could almost see PNF evaluating, say, hey, we did an evaluation. We're not sure we're getting the, the benefit out of this that, uh, you know, is justifying it being open or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. We're, uh, you know, similar to what you did with Pocket Scan, where, you know, you put it out there, hey, uh, this is what we're going to do. Uh, what are thoughts or feedback on that? You know, and then people would, you know, kind of have an opportunity to, to pipe in and not necessarily be the bad guy. Um, yeah. That's a, because, because I really think, yeah, uh, I think that the more that PNF is able to be the neutral, you know, good guy and bad guy, to be fair, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what PNF is essentially paid for, you know, to, to, to yep. be able to be that, that kind of entity. So I think if PNF led that, uh, I personally would definitely lean towards that. So I like it where the sockets are going. Great. Thank you. And yeah, I, I, I hear your point here too, which is like, it's a strong signal if nobody's weighing in, right? By nobody saying anything, you get the, the feedback you need to. I, I just think the maybe the gray area for me right now is exactly that, where it's like, how engaged is everybody to weigh in and say stuff? Because um, if I know 20 people are looking at it and intentionally not responding, that's a very different signal than who's looked at this, right? And so, um, yeah, I, I guess let like keep the feedback coming, um, especially in January. We'll do a first full review, and then February we'll get our second, and um, we'll see how the the cadence and the the feedback feels. And um, yeah, really appreciate this feedback. I will. I was hoping to kind of have the community um, weigh in more and get like a sentiment, and then make the decision versus having to go through the whole thing just as PNF. It's like this weird thing, like being the steward versus being the the. Uh, judge and i don't really want us to be the judge but maybe that's like you're saying that's the the role we have to play here no i i i, I believe pnf should be the judge um or you know a, a judge with a lot of feedback you know where you could uh you know you could signal hey uh you know internally we don't we don't uh we haven't evaluated that uh this is uh you know valuable to the community 
we're open to be wrong. Let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, but uh, we're expecting to close this by this date. And then if there's substantial, um, you know, uh, justification from multiple parties, you know, then that's a pretty clear signal for PNF. You know, it doesn't have to uh, make a, uh, you know, make a hard decision if there's clearly, you know, good logic happening. Um yeah, you know, one thought I was also thinking about is: uh, is it possible to, with with our governance system that's being produced, is it possible to have only citizens uh, vote, like have votes that don't include the weights of the um, uh, the state, uh, like contributor or something like that, where it's just strictly a democratic vote? I I have to imagine so because I believe the weighting happens on like it has to when you set up the vote it has to choose the weights and I think it just defaults to the ones that have been set up but I I think I get where you're going which is could we just have a democratic vote on something like sockets where it's one vote one person yeah uh, yeah I look for things like sockets or other mm-hmm. things where a weight might enable um uh you know because uh, I could see there being votes or something like that where people aren't really sure about it, but because one mm-hmm. person that's heavily in staking uh, can just, you know, vote and, you know, control something like a socket, right? Because, yeah. well, because I think traditionally with Pocket, the, uh, uh, the proposals that have a lot of traction uh, or a lot of impact have a lot of votes. Uh, and then a lot of the smaller ones uh, don't get a lot of votes. And, you know, you can chop that up to people not paying attention or people not having time, whatever it is. But uh, that, that has been my concern with the weighted uh, pro- process is if it's weighted, then on those smaller votes, it would actually be very easy for someone to, um, you know, to, to kind of control an initiative um and yeah you can say that's the uh, you know that's the problem with the dow or you know that if the dow chooses to do that and not participate then that's their fault but mm-hmm. i don't know i'm just thinking of the social games no I, I i totally hear you on that and that's going to be really interesting because you're right um if it's mostly a vote on a like a uh yeah like you said a lower impact thing and one builder could come in and completely overthrow that vote um if they have an opinion so yeah, I think like Shane, appreciate this feedback. I think it makes sense for us to say like we have our initial set of what we think the weight should be, but like we absolutely are going to need to change those after a couple of votes. Like I can't imagine we got it perfect first try. So let me yeah. let me do two things. Let me take that as a like can we do unweighted voting? And then I also wonder if something like sockets, an anonymous vote to avoid the political games would actually be helpful which is like you have to verify that you're a voter, but then it doesn't actually go on chain for people to see who voted where. Um, and I know that's kind of not the point, but these aren't like huge stakes. So I don't know. I'd love to play with it and see what, what people feel is fair, I guess. Yeah, and I really, that, that's really the kind of the point is I don't think there's a one vote mechanism fits for everything. And so I feel like there's going to be some things where it would be better just to have citizens vote right where there is no weight but then with like Mm -hmm. certain uh certain type of decisions uh especially ones that affect the larger network uh that's really where weight would matter so uh so smaller things you know and, and maybe there's like a threshold on uh you know what you know like different categories right if it's protocol changes weights are are involved right uh mm-hmm. or if it's large DAO uh proposals uh weights are involved if it's you know small stuff things that you know people maybe need to do you know weekly or something like that um uh which a lot of times you know people might not necessarily be involved weekly on on a lot of these like little decisions then that's where citizen mm-hmm. votes are involved um and it just comes down to however many individuals uh believe in this or not not necessarily the power of the individual because you know just staking um you know staking i i don't see how that's super relevant to something like a socket 
um, right. that is really a small, you know, th- is, this isn't a, a huge network change. So why should they right. have all this extra vote? Um, and especially with a socket, you know, someone could just, yep. someone could literally just keep leading a socket of just their one vote uh, heavily outweighs everyone else's. Um, and, you know, there, there's all sorts of social games that obviously we play, but that that's having different types of votes is really what I was getting at. So appreciate you hearing the yeah. feedback. No, I do. Um, thanks, Shane. That's actually great feedback. And I'm going to bring that up with Ben and uh, Jack and just see if maybe we can have, like you said, maybe three type of systems for different votes. Because um, again, like you're saying, we don't really need a heavy weight on lightweight social mechanics, which sockets tend to be more like that. So yeah, it's really good feedback. Let me let me get get with Ben, and then um, probably early in the new year we can we can come up with a post or something around that. Yeah, and, and one other aspect to this is kind of the game theory wise, where if there are large voters that can, you know, just kind of move around to different uh, uh, smaller votes and kind of control them, um, you know, that that definitely opens the door to kind of faction voting. Um, yep. Uh, because, you know, there, there might be someone, uh, you know, who's able to, hey, hey, you know, a lot more, there, there could be a lot more like lobbying, right? Large voters. Sure. Uh, and if one large voter is willing to, you know, be lobbied to, you know, keep a socket in business or something. Yeah. It, the, and obviously, uh, I'm going kind of far with the game theory, but I'm just being real of kind of where this goes, especially a little later down the road when uh, there's a lot of people that aren't necessarily known that are joining the DAO. Yep. Yeah, I did totally hear you on that. And, you know, when Jinx decides he wants to mobilize an army to open 12 sockets for himself, like that can definitely happen. So um, I'm glad that you're actually voicing that. that that's what this has been all about. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> well, we'd be happy to support a socket by you, Jinx. You let us know. Um, yeah, Shane, let's, let's figure that out. Um, I, I, I like where your head's at. And, you know, a lot of these social games have been thought through by Jack and Ben, so I'm sure they have really nice takes on this. Maybe we can do that in our next community call and just kind of say, like, here's where we're at and what we're thinking and get a little update. Sounds good. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Shane. That's, uh, governance was kind of, uh, like, one of the things that, that I had in mind as well, um, but perhaps in a slightly different direction. I saw that uh, CryptoCorn had opened up a proposal around uh, attempting to participate in sort of a group, I don't even know what to call it, uh, investigation, I suppose, in regards to the the end of uh, Nodes for All's uh, uh, business entity and uh, the outstanding uh, stakes there. And we've never had, I mean, in the four years that we've been live on mainnet, I don't think we've ever had a, you know, an organization go dark in such an aggressive way and you know i hate to use the word rug pull but that's you know kind of where things are there i guess do we have any thoughts on whether dow governance is actually relevant to that sort of thing is that something that the dow should be involved in I don't know if that's directed at me or at everyone. Um, everyone, I guess, but yeah. you're the doubt guy here. <laughs> yeah, I know this one's so interesting, right? Because it, it actually probably affects quite a few people in the community. So, I mean, I this is me speaking off the cuff here, so don't don't hold me down to this. I do think that the foundation uh, should definitely be involved in this. It's just the question of responsibility at this point, right? Like, you have a custodial solution and like, what do we do then? Like, like legitimately, I don't know if there's anything that can be done from our end. So I think one point, ultimately, like, oh, I'm, oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't realize you were finished. I'm finished. Go for it. I mean, what, what I was going to say is about the custodian thing, because I saw that popping up in the comments uh, saying, well, you should have done non-custodial. The thing is, is non-custodial came late into the game. So, uh, you know, Nodes for all didn't have this huge growth or anything after non-custodial became an option. Uh, and so just like most staking providers, they originally started as a custodian service. So that was the only option. Um, non-custodial came later, 
uh, and some providers transitioned, a lot of other ones didn't. Um, and and so I believe most of Nodes for All, uh, um, yeah, most of their uh, 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 users came early. I mean, but I almost wonder, wouldn't before going down the lawyer route, wouldn't wouldn't it be possible for something like a uh, pocket scan to do kind of like an initial investigation, like pull all the wallets, you know, for notes for all, um, you know, kind of like the amounts, because I believe they've already unstaked to some extent. So like being able to track those funds, I don't know. It, it, is it maybe it better to, to first start with kind of like public accountability to where this, you know, it it's visible if, if it's from notes for all, you know, then uh, then you kind of go the legal route, um, you know, because could we, you know, pay pocket scan 5,000 bucks to throw up a, uh, uh, you know, a, a bunch of data uh, tracking notes for all and, uh, you know, a little, uh, you know, a little website or, you know, something that we can just track what's going on with these funds. Um, then at least publicly, it's like it's out there, you know, the community says the community is is you know acknowledge this we're focused on it and then you know if if it maintains that they still don't do anything that's where maybe you go the the you know kind of legal route but i i don't know if legal route's the first thing to start with though because all that information has to be gathered anyways so wouldn't it be better just to start the the uh, get the important information now and then maybe that could actually be what leads to a resolution first. Yeah, I, I definitely support that. I, I don't know if like Ramiro's on this call, but um, it does seem like something we could probably pull and make transparent, which you're right, I think is the first step. I also want to remind everybody that like victim blaming is a real thing. Like while crypto is a space that you're supposed to control everything, like it's not the people's fault, like you said, that they chose to go with a custodial provider and then the custodial provider disappeared. Um, you know, FTX is a great example of this. So, um, yeah, let me let me take that as like, and the other thing too, Shane, is um, while they are not available right now, I don't know how long they've been gone for. And I also don't know that this isn't just three people working on a thing and the person responsible is like offline for a month. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't want to blow this up into like, this is a real problem until we've had somebody on that side um, either ignore or admit to something like this too. I'm also not a legal person. Like I don't, I don't know shit. So Ramiro. Um, I have asked already for a little more information in the forum about that because we don't know anything. Notes for all has not uh, an, a specific uh, domain, so I tried to search for them this morning, and I think that they were a pool. I, I'm not sure what they were exactly. I, I don't know anything about this subject, so I asked for addresses and other stuff so we can start to track something about them, but I, I have no information, and we will be glad to help, of course. Yeah, I think it was like Block Hub. Or something like that was there was their yeah. domain oh yeah two domains there were no i think yeah well I, I if you can put all the information that you know in the forum so we can have one place to to get all it will be best and we can start searching a little yeah do we know that block hub uh was only node sprawl and and stuff, or were they also? I, I thought they they might also do stuff with uh, block spaces as well. Is that are, are they connected at all, or was Notes for All and Block Hub just one thing? Uh, I suspect that they were connected, but I have no real proof about that. Well, I know that Block Hub did do Notes for All, uh, but I. Also, I think I saw or heard or something that Blockhub was also doing, you know, that for other kind of. Uh, uh, I think Blockspaces was was one as yeah. well, or at least I 
but I, I could have been thinking of something else. I, I'm not sure at all, which is why I ask. I have sent a list through the chat with all the the service domains that were staked at any point in the pocket network. So if any one of you can go through through the 600 of them and tell me if they know some of them are related to Nodes for All, we can start making some search from that point. And I'm I'm confident if somebody wants to you know respond with requests for information to that forum thread that people in the community would be happy to to help out on that. It's just a, such a weird thing because I think all of us. I don't think anyone in our community expected that we would deal with something like this given how close-knit the vast majority of the community is so lots of questions oh. to be answered aren't there people that like have close personal connections with pat and uh the other guy henry yeah i mean i, I my understanding is there's people that have yeah prior past you know connections with them so um yeah uh, it's hard to imagine that they haven't, or they're not aware at all that people are upset that they haven't got their coins or something. So, oh no, I mean that 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 totally is the case, and and it's it's my uh, it's my understanding that neither of them was actually the the principal in in what in what happened. So, oh, all right, well, onward and upward to better things. Anything else we want to cover before we wrap it up today? Yeah, I just want to, um, regarding that stuff, it seems like keeping it all in the forum is the right place to do it, although we can open a channel in Discord. Um, but yeah, the forum's going to give us a little more, a little less ephemeral conversation. So yeah, if people have thoughts, let's use that first and um, keep anything important in the forums. That way, Romero, you can look through stuff too. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, please. Um, can I chime in a bit? I mean, of course. What if there's no, <clears throat> what if there's no pocket left in that wallet? I mean, has been a month. Unstaking was about about another month, right? Yeah. They could have easily. I don't know. I mean, I'm not gonna say anything, but I mean, the pocket could be gone forever. And what if? You know, they sold it at two to three cents, and now it's like ten cents. I mean, it's gonna be very difficult to recover all those um, pockets. Well, yeah. Tony, you're the one who probably has them all, right? So <laughs> you're gonna have to start the Santa Claus. Um, but in all seriousness, I hear you, and in, in I guess the the real place to start here is let's figure out. I would, I would say my first two things are like, one, let's figure out the damages. Like maybe this is not a huge amount of pocket. Um, and then let's also figure out if they're actually, if something happened before we start going down the rabbit hole of what could have happened. Um, Cause there's a lot of options here that we just don't have enough information yet. So everybody can start getting really scared and worried. And, and one of these guys might show up back up and just be like, Oh yeah, we were offline for a month. So Beautiful. Also, if there's pocket in you know some of the wallets um, owned by Note for All, I mean that wallet could be blacklisted on all of the exchanges mm -hmm. and of course on the swap as well or the W pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's certainly an option. Well, I'll look forward to seeing uh, further insight and input on the uh, on the forum itself. That's I'd never seen a proposal like that before, obviously. So I wanted to get some insight from y'all and kind of draw attention to it.
But we are coming up on the top of the hour now, so any final thoughts or questions or input? <laughs> You're yeah. killing me. <laughs> um, yeah, just a final reminder that I think Grove is probably doing the same, but PNF is offline next week. Like we'll still be checking things, um, but we're just going to be slow. So if you have anything urgent, Telegram might be the best way to get a hold of somebody next week. Um, okay. Dermot did say he'll be around a bit, so Telegram or message Dermot um, if there's a fire. Sounds good. Okay. Also. Not that's relevant as PNF, of course, or group, uh, but we at PocketScan will be also be off next week. So expect things to move slower if you ask for anything special. Jesus, all you lazy people. You know <laughs> what we'll be off yeah. next week? This call right here. We will not be off next week. For anybody who feels <laughs> like hanging out next Wednesday at noon, Jinx will be here with the window open, waiting to see who shows Heck up. Yeah. Heck yeah. There's no place like home for the holidays. <laughs> Fred, you can join from the gym. Uh, I Yeah, no. <laughs> no, thank you. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks, as always, uh, for joining us. And, uh, yeah, we will be here uh, next week, uh, but no recording or anything else. It'll just be a purely casual call. And uh, we'll see y'all then. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye -bye. Happy, New Year. Happy holidays. <laughs>